These Election 2021 candidate interviews are sponsored by Edmonds College, Office Tech, and James Russell, PLLC, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad to have you join us for uh, another of our City of Linwood mayoral and city council candidate forums. I'm Teresa Whipple. I'm the publisher of Linwood Today, and I'm here with Linda Jones, the president and CEO of the Linwood Chamber of Commerce. And we are happy to have with us tonight Chris Eck. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really uh, glad to be here and appreciate the invitation. Yeah, and you're running for um, city council position one. And uh, we're going to start with a question that is pretty basic, and that is what experiences would you bring to the council and how are they relevant to being a council member? Thank you for that question. I have a variety of experiences in my personal life and professional life that I would like to bring to this position. So, first and foremost, I've lived in Linwood for almost 25 years. This is where I raised my two girls with my husband. They've gone to Linwood Public Schools. And um, I've had a career in multiple sectors and a variety of skills that I can contribute. So I've worked in corporate um, and been in operations management for a very long time. Good problem solver, know how to bring people together to really tackle a hard problem where people may not disagree on what the solution should be but to help find common ground so that we can really create solutions that stick and make sense. My last few years in my career, I've had the fortunate um, experience of working in nonprofits. So I spent a few years at Cocoon House in administration and currently work at Volunteers of America um, in leadership. And it's been a wonderful experience. Um, I moved to working in nonprofits on purpose because I really, uh, enjoy work with meaning. And I see this as very related to that work. I want to serve my community. Um, it's important to me to do so. And I do believe that I've got proven experience and skills to bring to the position to serve the city. Okay. Thank you very much. Linwood? L Linda? Linwood? I, this has not been the first time I've called her Linwood, which she said was why she got the job. It's but. why I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name had to match my city. Okay. Linwood has been cited as a model for regional growth. How does Linwood grow while still retaining the character of its existing neighborhoods? That too is a great question. We've already been growing the last few years and we know that will continue. It's a place where folks want to move to, businesses want to move to, and light rail certainly is coming. Um, I think it's important to preserve a lot of our history and character while we grow, but also looking at new opportunities to shape the city, how all residents uh, and community members would like to see that. You know, we've got uh, single family homeowners, we've got uh, folks that choose to live in condominiums, uh, rent apartments, we've got really a variety of uh, housing and a variety of needs for our community members. And I think there's a lot we can do to preserve the character while embracing the newness of what we could do. I want Linwood to be a destination even more than it is today, right? I think there's opportunity to really honor the cultures and the diversity of Linwood. And by the way, Linwood is more diverse than most cities in Stormish County. We should embrace that and see that as a strength. And I think we can really make that shine in artwork and community spaces and make this a welcoming place with a high quality of life for those who live here as well as those who visit. Thank you very much. Apologies, I didn't turn the page. What ideas do you have for addressing the city's homelessness issue? And I've thought about this a lot from a couple of different angles. Um, one experience I neglected to share earlier is I've had the uh, honor of being on the planning commission for the last year and a half. Um, I joined right before the pandemic and am currently the chair. So not only do I bring that eye and that experience with me uh, to looking at homelessness as an issue that needs to be solved, but I also do work for nonprofits and currently in that work, you know, we serve uh, population that is uh, homeless, among others. 
So there's a couple of different things that we need to do. On the, on the front line, when we have emergencies, so many emergencies are related to needs that uh, community members have, whether it's mental health, um, it's tied into homelessness, it's tied into domestic abuse, and sometimes people leave their housing situation because of domestic abuse. Uh, or they leave because they've got addiction, addiction issues. And so on the front line, my plan is to lead discussions between the city and uh, human services providers to have professionals on the front line to deal with the variety of needs that can cause homelessness. Additionally, you've got families who live in cars and you need not just folks on the front line, but you need enough staff within the city that we're contracting with that can do outreach and help those families that are living in cars. I think you need to get to the root causes so that you can hit it on the front end when there's an emergency, but also have those ample resources within the city of Linwood to deal uh, with the issues when we are trying to channel folks into housing, when we're trying to channel them into treatment. Th that twofold approach I believe is very important. Very good. Thank you so much. How would you help Linwood businesses that have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? That's one of my priorities. I see that as a big priority for the city of Linwood. Um, we know that we're not even quite through the pandemic and we will be feeling the effects of the pandemic for a while, culturally, but also economically. Um, I think what we can do there is really in addition to other things I wanna to do to consistently listen to community members who are living here, we need to consistently listen to our business owners, all sizes of businesses. And while I'm really happy the city is receiving CARES funds, we really need to be strategic with those funds that are coming in and also with our budget to make sure that we're budgeting for priorities that really do meet the needs of the business owners currently right now. Um, and work with the city, uh, excuse me, work with the state and the county on what funds and support are available to businesses. But I think listening to them is gonna be really important first. We don't wanna assume what each business owner needs. We need to do intentional outreach, talk to them, do this with speed, right? Because it's an issue now that needs to be dealt with quickly. And then figure out how we can work together on different funding sources to help. I also wanna make sure that we're doing things alongside that, right in tandem to attract new businesses. That's super important to our tax base. It's important to bring visitors to the area and will drive even more economic um, success for our city. Thank you very much. Do you have ideas for better engaging residents who have not traditionally been involved in city government? I do. And, you know, being on the planning commission, I've seen the strides that the city's been taking to try to get feedback from our community um, and, and all parts of our community. I think that's important work and I do want to take that further. I, I would like to see uh, on council, I would want to be on point to have regular meetings with community members but not just community members, but working through community groups, right? So we have LUTI, we, other, we have other great organizations in the city that we could be uh, collaborating with to make sure that we're doing all we can to have all segments of our population feel comfortable talking with us and being a part of what we wanna build. I think comfort in establishing that trust with community members working through community groups will be key. Very good. Thank you. Name the top challenge you see for Linwood in the next five years, and how would you address it? Affordable housing to me is the biggest issue, and I do see it from a variety of uh, my experiences, um, unlike um, maybe some of the others that might be seeking this office. So through my experience on the Planning Commission and my experience in human services, and when I say affordable housing, I really do mean specifically middle income and low income uh, community members. So there's different issues within that. Let me start with the fact that we've got folks live, 
living in the city that make teacher salaries, for instance, that are really struggling to pay rent. They're struggling to be able to afford a house. Then you look at Whispering Pines, you know, the residents there who are in crisis and have been for a while. There's a variety of populations within the city that can't afford to live here. The truth is our kids, our grandkids can't afford to live here. So it's not unlike other cities in the region that struggle with the same issue. But what I would do again is we see how partnerships work. I would hold it up as an example, Housing Hope in Everett and what they want, want to do in Linwood. And they're able to successfully partner with developers, partner with the cities in order to use what little land we have that's usable to create uh, affordable housing and low income housing as well. Partnerships will be very important. I, I look forward to leading those discussions. Thank you. As a council member, how would you address concerns from marginalized populations who might not feel safe living in Linwood? I'm glad you asked me that. I did have an opportunity to meet with the chief recently of police and um, I asked specifically if it, uh, incidents related to um, racially, racially motivated attacks or harassment had increased substantially. I was actually surprised to hear that was not the, uh, not the case in the last year. What I would hypothesize is perhaps maybe we have an issue with community members not feeling safe, speaking up when incidents are happening. I don't want to imply that incidents are skyrocketing in the city of Linwood, please, please know that. But we first, what that tells me is we need to make sure we have a safe environment. Again, working with community groups to build trust where all community members feel comfortable coming forward if they are harassed, if they are um, unfortunately victim of some of these sorts of crimes that we know unfortunately are occurring throughout the country. So that's a piece of it. When things do happen, you need that trust so that people feel comfortable coming forward and sharing them and asking for help. But I believe regular Occur, occurring meetings with community members where you start to build a trustful relationship are going to be important, not just at election time, but consistently throughout the month, throughout the years where we're building, it's gonna take intentional work. You know, all relationships do, and we've got to invest that time. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, last question. Pretend you are talking to a business owner who's considering relocating their business to Linwood. Give us your 30 second sales pitch for why the city is a good place for business. Well, first I would say that we already have visitors that do like to come to Linwood to shop. And so we've got, you know, that history, which is exciting, but also look at what light rail is going to do. It's going to bring even more people to our city who will want to be here and to shop. And so we are gonna be a destination. It's an exciting time for Linwood. And I think there's a lot of opportunity when you look at the number of movie theaters we have, why, why aren't we talking about like um, cinema sort of gatherings where, what are they, what are they called? <laughs> sort of um, film fests those sorts of things. I mean, I would say there's, there's ample opportunity in our city to do that kind of thing, especially if we have the public transportation to allow for that sort of movement of large numbers of people to come here for events. Why not concerts? I feel like really there's endless opportunity. Now I gave you more than a 30 second speech, I get that. <laughs> but, but those are my ideas and that's what I would say. This is a very exciting time for the city of Linwood. Thank you very much. And you're not the only one who's given more than 30 seconds. Right? <laughs> that's a lot of good things. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, we're on to the final part and that is where you directly address the voters and tell them why they should vote for you. So go for it. Thank you for that. I am a first time candidate. And um, 
I'm excited by that. This is a great opportunity um, for me personally, if, if we would actually have voters consider um, my experience that I can bring to the table, you know, not just as someone who's lived in Linwood for a long time and raised a family, but someone who deeply cares and wants to serve everyone here. In addition to being a wife and mom, I have my long career in multiple sectors and my skills at leadership and bringing people together to solve problems, even if they're super complex, but to figure out things that we all can agree on and at the end of the day, create solutions that make sense. It is about partnerships, so I can bring people to the table from my different experiences to actually help us start to solve these problems. You know, I'm someone who does look for current, uh, for common ground that is really important to me. I think at the end of the day, we all want to do what's right for Linwood and everyone who lives here. Um, I, I see this as something that's collaborative and exciting for me to actually bring these skills and experience to serve the city. So what I would say is if you want a fresh face with a ton of ideas and the ability to actually work with people to make things happen, please consider voting for me. Great. Thank you. We really do appreciate you taking time out of what I know is a busy schedule for candidates right now. <laughs> uh, and um, we will be uh, posting this soon. So thanks again for joining us. Great. Thank you so much again for the opportunity. It's nice to meet you both. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. you too. Take care.